Hi, I'm David Rakovich, president of the Stockton Maritime Museum, here for our much overdue update video. We've got a lot to cover today. It's been over a year since our last video, but uh, we've got a lot of work done here and I want to uh, bring you up to speed. Those of you that don't follow us on Facebook, um, we post updates every couple weeks, but for, uh, those of you that see us on uh, YouTube, it's been a while, so we want to start with some of the important work we're doing here on the superstructure. We finally have started rebuilding the superstructure, all the 70-year-old plywood. We've been working on this all summer long, uh, prepping it, sanding it, painting it, and um, it's really making a hell of a difference to the appearance of the ship. And up all the way on top, on the 03 level, you can see we have the awning installed. That's the bridge awning. We built that frame over the last year and a half, and the awning was just installed late last year. So let's go up there and take a closer look at what we've been doing since, uh, since our last update. Hey, as we make our way topside, as we pass through the gift shop here, I wanted you to see the model that Don Reinhardt, the chairman of our board, just recently completed and installed on board. He's been working on this for a couple of years. It's a very accurate depiction of the Lucid after it went through the Fram. So this is what the ship looks like now after the modernization program it went through in 1969. But uh, hundreds, if not thousands of hours of work here. The level of authenticity is amazing up to the point that um, we're even sending signals here through the signal lamp. I think it says, good job, Don, if I, if I remember correctly. Okay, here we are in the 03 level, the bridge, fly bridge or bridge. Um, what I wanted you to see up here is we completed this awning structure late last year and had the custom made covering installed. It's now one of the coolest spots on the ship. You got a beautiful view from up here and a, and a nice breeze, you're out of the sun. We're really happy the way this came out. But also up here, you, I talked earlier about the work we're doing to the superstructure. Here's some of the first uh, panels that we completed. Um, this has been sanded down to the bare wood. Uh, carpentry repairs were made. And then a uh, fiberglass resin, a thinned fiberglass resin was installed, was applied to kind of bind this 70 year old plywood, uh, the outside veneer, bind it back to its, uh, its core, and then sanded, primed, uh, uh, several applications of uh, material to repair the dents and gouges and whatnot, and then uh, three coats of finished paint. So we're pretty happy with the way this turned out. Very labor intensive. This one little compartment here, this is called the cruise compartment, this probably took uh, three weeks uh, worth of work every day to get this to get this to the, this condition. Okay, we're making our way down to after steering to show you our next big project we just completed. But I want to stop off here in the wardroom. You've heard us talking about our fire sprinkler system that took us two years to install. It's been charged now and activated and it's up and running. You can see here on our antique gauge how we're holding 70 pounds pressure. That was a major milestone here in our progress. We're pretty proud of. Okay, here we are in after steering or emergency steering. Um, every Navy ship has a space at the very fan tail where the ship can be steered uh, in an emergency. Uh, you could tell we're in after steering because here's one of our original rudder posts. Uh, the scrappers got one, we're gonna have to make one, but this is uh, one of the original ones. But this area had a lot of serious damage in here. Much like forward berthing, um, the overhead beams had rotted out. Um, up in forward berthing, they put in a skylight and a hot tub, which caused that. Here, it was a leaking deck that caused these beams to uh, pretty much disintegrate. The deck was in good shape, had leaks, but the structure underneath rotted. So all this has been replaced. We laminated uh, these beams here in place in the last oh, six weeks, and it's ready now for sanding and painting. Here you can get an idea, as there's no square corners or flat surfaces on this ship, 
These have about a two and a half inch to three inch rise in them. They, the top, the fantail is what's above us here, uh, has a very pronounced arch to it. So water drains off of it very easily. Uh, you can see the transom here. This is all original. It was in very good shape. For some reason that didn't suffer any damage. We built some new brackets because the original bronze ones were missing. Uh, these are steel that we galvanized, but um, this is already uh, getting ready for paint. This is solid wood here. This last five feet of the ship here, or four feet rather. This is all solid wood, laminated two by twelves. And this is the structure that supports the two mine sweeping cranes that are mounted right at the stern. One cool feature I want to point out because we haven't filmed down in this compartment before is, like I said, this is after steering or emergency steering. If the hydraulic steering gear went out or the electric signal from the bridge to down here was lost, there was a sailor that was always stationed right here when the ship was underway. There was a gearbox mounted here on the wall and there was a five or six foot diameter stainless steel wheel here that he would turn. By turning that wheel hundreds of revolutions through this gearbox, it would pull a cable. The cable went through bronze pulleys much like this and the cables went around the perimeter of this compartment to an arm on the rudder shaft. And it was possible to steer the ship back, back here just from using elbow grease. Um, a lot of sailors like the, liked this duty back here because very rarely did they ever have to steer the ship by hand, but also it was a good place to lay down and take a nap when nobody was calling you. Hey, we're back up in the cruise mess area. I forgot to mention when we were in emergency steering down there, but since our last update video, we turned the ship 180 degrees. Here's a short video of us turning the Lucid out in the middle of the river here with our workboat. Our workboat, this is the workboat we bought from the Navy a few years ago uh, with push knees on it so we could use it as a tug. Uh, and that's called the Rough and Ready. Here it is out in the middle of the river, turning the lucid, putting it back up against the dock. While we're here, I wanted to talk about um, some of the visitors we had this past year, uh, starting with our last XO that served on this ship, uh, Commander Bruce Daniels. Him and his wife celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary last year, and they celebrated it here on the lucid. We thought that was pretty cool. They brought up uh, 30 or 40 family members from Los Angeles and spent the day here touring the ship. And um, the other cool visitor we had was the curator of the USS New Jersey and the executive director of the Historic Naval Ships Association, Ryan Szymanski. They film a video every day, five days a week on the New Jersey. And he has like a quarter of a million followers. But um, we got together with the uh, Red Oak Victory and the Hornet and we sponsored him and his staff's trip out to the West Coast earlier this year, I think it was in March, and he filmed five videos here in a single day. Those videos are available to view on his YouTube channel, which is Battleship New Jersey, as well as our YouTube channel, which is USS Lucid. Uh, well worth watching. Some of his videos that he filmed here have 30,000 views, it's, or 40,000 views, it's just amazing. But him and his team spent a day and a night here. They spent the night on the ship. And that has resulted in a lot of visitors. We're getting visitors now uh, coming from all over the country that were not aware of us before his visit. So that really worked out well. Another visitor that we had last year was uh, the daughter of a plank owner. Debbie Marino traveled up from LA. Her father was a, uh, on the original crew of the Lucid in 1954, Irvin Hove, able-bodied seaman. Um, her and her husband came and toured and asked if uh, we would mind if she put in for a grant from a foundation that she works with. And I told her, of course not, we'd be happy to uh, any information I can give you, you know, just let me know. And she's, oh no, she heard enough on the tour. And, um, and a few months later, we had one of the largest checks ever from, uh, from a foundation. So shout out to Diane and uh, we'll make sure to honor your late father's memory here on his first ship, USS Lucid. And just in the last month, I was able to visit with the last, uh, second to the last commanding officer of the ship, Floyd Fields, who's retired, uh, living down in, in the Los Angeles area, uh, has provided us with a lot of archival materials from his time as serving as CO on the Lucid. 
So very much appreciated his input. Also sitting here, you could see a photo on the back wall uh, showing that artist depiction of our move to downtown. And we've been working diligently on that for the last 18 months, um, making plans and architectural drawings. And we just submitted a grant request to the state of California for the design, uh, permitting, and eventually construction of improvements on that site. We've got some artists rendering here that uh, where we wanna recreate an era, an era correct shipyard building. Um, you might recall um, we had a building donated to us, the old Kohlberg building that had the mole loft in it, but unfortunately uh, it burned down last year due to some homeless activity. So we have another building that they donated to us with a lot of beautiful building supplies in it, some virgin dug fir beams, and we're gonna build a reproduction of that building that we lost. It'll actually be better than the better than the 100 year old one. But so we recently applied for this grant and we've cleared the first hurdle. There's about three more hurdles we have to clear. It may be uh, an 18 month process. We're not exactly sure, but uh, we've met with a lot of positive response from the folks at the state who approve these types of grants. So we're excited about that. Um, those of you that have ever traveled to uh, the Boeing Museum of Flight at Boeing Field in Seattle, there's an old building there that was a shipyard called the Red Barn. That was Boeing's first manufacturing facility. The building we're gonna build is much like that. Workshops on the ground floor and a mold loft on the second floor where they laid out large pieces of paper and with string and, and tools, they would design these complicated uh, ribs and frames of the ship in full size layout uh, for the use in the, in the shipyard. That's the type of building we're gonna build and we could use that second floor for gatherings, dinners, exhibits, and whatnot. Unfortunately, in the last year, we lost three individuals that had close ties with the Lucid. Um, the first was Admiral Wilgenbush. He was the last skipper of the Lucid, uh, served as skipper in 69 and 70 and was the one in charge when they decommissioned it. I had not met the man, he has not, he lived on the East Coast, he was not able to make it out here due to, due to poor health, but I spoke to him frequently and he shared a lot of cool stories with us. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to get out here and, and see his old ship. He told me a real cute story a couple years ago about his granddaughter, 11 years old, doing a story for Veterans Day uh, for junior high. And she wrote a story and asked, asked her grandpa, grandpa, what were the five ships you served on? And, he talked to her about these five ships and she came back a week or two later with a report and was excited to tell him that, hey, grandpa, one of your ships of the five is still remaining. And, and he said, oh, really, which one? And, and she said, the USS Lucid. And he chuckles and said, no, no, that was the only ship I served on made out of wood. It would have been one of the other ships that survived, certainly not the Lucid. But anyhow, I guess he wasn't up to speed on the internet, so he didn't know about us, but after that, uh, he contacted us and we stayed in contact and it's with great regret we have to announce his, his passing just recently. And another one was a, a young man who was a student here that recently graduated from the Building Futures Academy, Aaron McDowell. He graduated from here probably eight or nine years ago and he remained a volunteer. He was instrumental in getting the um, paranormal investigation unit out here to do a, a survey of the ship a couple different occasions. As a matter of fact, at the time of his death, he was, he was uh, planning another visit. Uh, they were quite excited to do these paranormal investigations in the evening. Uh, this kid came from a real tough background, was a ward of the state, but uh, was deeply involved um, with us here and, and planned to someday uh, be a docent on the ship. So unfortunately, a man was only uh, in his late 20s when he passed away unexpectedly early this year. And the last was a volunteer from the East Coast, Donald Skinner, who went by the nickname of Mule. He came out here three or four times from Charleston uh, to spend a week or two on the ship working. And he was a auxiliary engineman on MSOs and some other ships while he served in the Navy based out of Charleston. And he loved working down in the bilges. And because he was an auxiliary uh, engine men, he worked on things like condensers and coolers, air compressors, ammonia compressors for a cooling compartment. And he was a, a real collector of naval memorabilia. And he has sent us over the years, he sent us a, 
a ton of cool stuff that we'll eventually use for our display. Uh, died way too young, way too soon, but uh, with great loss that uh, we lost these three men in the last year. But on a brighter note, we have to finish on a brighter note. Uh, recently, just in the last month, we were able to acquire three more Packard diesel engines, and two of them being the 2D850 cubic inch straight six cylinder engines. Those are as rare as hen teeth. There was one on each of these ships originally uh, that turned the ship's emergency generator. Um, and, and with that, we got one more of the 1D1700, the V12 Packards. So we have enough to put down in the engine room to make it look complete. Uh, probably not running, you know, but um, they'll look like, uh, the engine room will look like it did when the ship was originally built. And finally, to wind this whole video up, uh, people always ask what our address is, and we'll put that on the screen here. But uh, it's Stockton Maritime Museum, 4290 Cherokee Road, Stockton, California. 95215. Um, and our curator's name is Gary Howells. We'll put his email address on the screen here. If you have any artifacts that uh, you think we might be interested in, please contact Gary and uh, we'll get back to you on, on what we can do with those artifacts. And I want to thank all of you who have been supporting us over the years. Um, like I said a few minutes ago, we're applying for a, a state grant. We've done all this work so far without any state, federal, or local money. Uh, this has all come from individuals such as yourself. Uh, we want to thank you for that. Keep supporting us. We don't have any of this government money yet. Um, but we appreciate all you uh, that contribute to our efforts here, either annually or we have a few folks that send us a check every month. Every dollar goes a long ways. I like to tell people we get $3 worth of work out every dollar we get received because we have no paid employees. This is all done by volunteers. So thank you. Um, make sure to check out, uh, if you haven't done so yet, check out our weekly or every other week we, we do a post on Facebook at USS Lucid. And all of our previous videos are on our YouTube channel, also at USS Lucid. Thank you and have a great day. <music>